I've spent most of this week on theory. Let me do, now do some examples. Iterated integrals, particularly after all this heavy theory, are not actually that bad to calculate, at least depending on how you like single variable integration. Here is a scalar field in two variables and an interval. What is the volume under the graph of this function over this interval in the xy plane? I set up the iterated integral. I can choose the order of the variables, so I'll put x outside and y inside. Notice how the bounds have to match. The dx is outside, so the x bounds are in the first integral. The dy is inside, so the y bounds are in the second integral. The integrand here is the sum of two pieces, so I'll split them up. In the first part, e to the x is constant as far as y is concerned, so its antiderivative is y e to the x. Then the antiderivative of e to the y is, of course, e to the y. I need to evaluate these on the bounds of y. I'll sometimes write y equals in the bounds to keep track of which variable I'm using. This can be useful notation to avoid confusion about which variable you need to replace. Then I do the evaluations. y at 6 minus y at 3 just leaves 3 in the first part, and in the second I get e to the 6 minus e to the 3. Then I integrate in x. e to the x is its own derivative, and the integrand in the second piece is constant, so the antiderivative is x times that constant. Finally, I evaluate on the bounds, the x bounds, and then I am done. This is roughly the amount of work I would like to see from you on iterated integrals. The entire single variable antiderivative piece is hidden, though in this example they were pretty simple antiderivatives, but you are likewise welcome to use a computer to do the single variable antiderivative steps and just write down the results. I do want to see the rest of this setup though, how the iterated integrals are set up, how the answer from the first flows into the second, how the bounds are evaluated. Here is another two-variable scalar field and another interval. Let me calculate the integral of this field over this interval. That is, calculate the volume under the graph of this function above this interval in the xy plane. I set up the iterated integral, choosing to put x on the inside and y on the outside, being careful to match out the bounds. Then I do the x integral first, the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. Then I evaluate on the x bounds. After simplifying the evaluation, I get 2y cubed over 3. Then I do the y integration, getting the antiderivative of y to the 4 over 6 and evaluating the y bounds. The result here is 0. This 0 result tells me that the volume defined by this graph is equally above and below the xy plane. Fubini's theorem tells me that the order of the iterated integrals doesn't matter. Let me check that for this example. Here is the same function and interval, but the reverse order of integration. I do the y antiderivative first to get y to the 4 over 4, and I evaluate on the bounds, replacing y instead of x. Well, then I get this integrand, which I would integrate in x and evaluate in bound, but the integrand here is already 0, so there's no work to do, and the integral is already, at this stage, 0. Notice that, in this order, I didn't actually have to do anything for the second integral. Though this is not too hard a calculation either way, this integral was a little bit less work in the second order. This situation is pretty common. It will often be easier to do the integrals in one order compared to the other. Try to choose your order carefully to take advantage of this when you can. Finally, here's another example. Another two-variable scalar field over an interval, another integral calculating the volume under the graph of the function. I do the same, this time choosing to put the x integral inside and the y integral outside, matching up the bounds carefully. The antiderivative of x is negative cosine of x plus y, and I evaluate on the bounds, here I can use a shift for the second function, realizing that cosine of y plus pi is negative cosine, and making an easier integrand for the second step for the y integral. I finish with the y antiderivative and evaluate on the bounds to calculate a volume of 2 under the graph of this function.